Hey guys and gals, now we're here from Drake Wing Gamers. I'm on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. We're on the latest build, and next up is the Indulgence. So, <laughs> I will just let you guys know right now, I'm actually using the censored build that the uh, author released alongside the main update. Um, this will, uh, this will kind of, uh, add some, like, pixelation, and it'll block out, it'll, uh, skip certain extremely not safe for work scenes and i think that's going to be great because that means less editing to do for me um but yeah anyway guys so just go ahead and sit right back uh sit back and let me entertain you for the next 18 minutes and let's jump right in alarm chan you are up and let's go all right <clears throat> and move towards them here I, I can help we can treat the oh okay yeah already it's all barely gone just taking over their shoulder okay the weasel snatches the Doberman's discarded blade and points it at me, her arm trembling. Demon! She backs away, snarling and spitting like a cornered beast. I just stare, my hands raised and fingers splayed to show them I mean no harm. Behind me, Loken is as still as a statue. A pair of them shuffle out, taking the critically injured Doberman with them. I'm left with Loken, but the sugar cook's gone. He finally drops his stone-faced facade and sighs, sadly. Deep down, I understand the Doberman was hostile beyond reason, but all I can picture is Loken's tw face twisted in brutality. You don't think that was a bit much? Loken whines, something incoherent, clearly upset by my disapproving tone. He attacked. You could have just disarmed him or something. We could have walked away. They would have followed. They were sugar cooks. Dawn sugar is dangerous. This isn't about Dawn sugar. As soon as you saw it had been cut, you went back down. This is you being overprotective again. He snarls. <laughs> no, this was a reasonable action. You have not dealt with those afflicted by the Black Zones before. It would have followed us. It would have killed you and then me. It would have harmed others. You must be ruthless, Alex, if you wish to survive this path. When they are this far gone, violence becomes their mother tongue. I don't know, Loken. Maybe you did the right thing, but you could have just disarmed him and... and... He stares at me expectantly. After all the compassion I've seen in him, this is just a darker, violent side I didn't want to think about. Maybe I'm just being naive. The guy was trying to kill him. This world is going to get this world isn't going to be sunshine and roses. You just scared me, okay? I've never seen anything like that, let alone from you. Husky's ears flatten backwards. He looks away. I did not mean to frighten you. I'm sorry. I did not enjoy doing that. He suddenly winces, flexing his shoulder painfully. I frown and look down at his paws. The left the left fist one is pretty bloodied up. I'm not sure if it's his blood or the Doberman's. I sigh. Pa. Hmm? Pa, give it to me. I am fine. I narrow my eyes, finally sick of his stubbornness. Give. Me. Your. Fucking. Paw. Now! Loken seems really surprised by my assertiveness. He sheepishly holds his huge mitt out for me. I take his paw in both hands, with the knuckles facing upwards, and run my fingers through his silky smooth bloodied pelt. It is fine. Bite. Scan. There's some nasty skin damage where his knuckles hit those teeth. He'll be okay, but we should disinfect the wound. Bite says you're fine, but you'll need to disinfect this. I gently wipe Loken's bloodied knuckles with the edge of my hoodie sleeve. He winces, baring his teeth. I do not care what Bite says. I am fine. After I shoot him a warning glare, he goes quiet again. At this point, I think he finds my scowls far more intimidating than I find his. I don't spend too long wiping the blood from Loken's paw. In fact, after about a minute, I realize I'm just holding it. Hand. What? Show. Me. Your. Hand. Now. Grinning at his parroting of me, I hold my hand up so he can inspect the cut. Still bleeding. He carefully takes my hand and turns it, palm facing upwards in his own. The blade has cut you. You are okay. I have brought bandages. Keep still. Still cradling my hand in his huge paw, he dives into his satchel with the other paw and roots around, taking a roll of linen from it. Loken wipes my skin clean with the cloth, then pulls a tiny glass bottle from his satchel. He pops the cork off and pours the transparent fluid onto the cut. Ah! Be still! I grimace through the pain of the disinfectant, watching as Loken wraps the bandage around my palm. <laughs> just like how we met. Hmm? When you bandaged me, the day we met. This wound is not severe. You will not require stitches. I laugh. I know, I was just saying. It reminded me of that. It feels like a long time ago. Hmm. He tightens the bandage, then goes still. Beneath my hand, I feel the paw he's cradling, with. He's cradling me with flex. His fingers squeeze me gently. It is like that day. We both looked down at our hands, laying on top of each other. 
I think about our little moment this morning and remember feeling him pressuring, pressing himself into my back, pressing himself into my back. He's a good hound. And I remember his face just a moment ago as he beat the sugar cook. Hey, Loken? Alex? You don't, um, you don't do that kind of thing to people a lot, do you? He shrinks guiltily. I do not. I was concerned they would harm you. And I am responsible for you. You are important. Unable to resist temptation, I squeeze his hand and feel him suddenly squeeze mine back. The rush of warmth I get being close to him like this is becoming familiar, but no less intoxicating. Don't worry about me. It turns out I can defend myself. Explain. I fought them off. All three. I was doing fine by myself. You are capable of fighting? I am. Good at it, too. Then you have strong vigor. Do not, you, do not, you did not tell me this before. I didn't know. To be fair, Bite did all the work. Bite did this? Yep. If it wasn't for him, they'd have killed me before you arrived. Hmm. I told you. He's on our side. He's quiet for a moment. Thank you. Huh? To bite. Tell him I said thank you. My eyes boggle. Did you just approve of him? I did. He has protected you. That is good. This doesn't make us friends, dog. I smile. He still doesn't like you. But I think he appreciates your thanks. Hmm. Okay. And since I can fight, you don't have to worry about me being in danger all the time. He looks confused. But... What? You are small. I roll my eyes, grinning. So what if I'm small? You will always be small. Hey, you just like being the big alpha hound, don't you? He pauses for a moment, then looks down at our hands resting atop each other. Then his grip tightens. He tugs, me, he tugs me ever so slightly closer and gives me a salacious grin. I do like that. Uh-oh! Whoa, where did this come from? Was it something I said? There's a particular hunger behind the look he's giving me. It's like I'm his next meal. Um, <laughs> his eyes narrow at me, and I stare back. He's never looked at me in this way, with this intensity, with, with this heat. I feel so small. I should act more like a big alpha hound to you. He's making no effort. He's making no effort to hide the intent behind his eyes. He's mentally undressing me. No, consuming me. I just know it. Y you should. M maybe. I think you would like that. <laughs> maybe I would. His head tilts in lavish judgment, sizing me up. Mm-hmm. Your face is red. Alex, now is not the time for this. We should keep moving. Oh, uh, right. He lets go of my hand. Come. The rhinestone dish is not far off. He swiftly pads towards the exit. I'm left stunned. He's never spoken to me like that before. It was charged, heated, and electric. Behind it, there was so much pent-up hunger. There was none of his usual insecurity rooted within his dominance there. He sounded so self-assured, so confident. It was yet another side of him I haven't seen before. Fuck, hearing him talk like that? I can only imagine what he's like when he's really turned on. What would happen if I teased him just a little? I wonder why he backed off. Did I say something wrong? Uh, coughing awkwardly, I follow him back outside. I need to keep moving before I get, get a boner. It is not far. We amble through more abandoned streets. I strain my ears, but hear nothing new unusual. There's no sign of the sugar cooks who fled from us. We're alone. <coughs> I pause for a moment and stare into one of the vacant buildings. Inside is hollow. Eerie. I stare for longer, and my mind wanders. Idly, my hand fumbles with the music box in my pocket. My entire species is gone. Nobody even remembers what we look like. One second, guys. Alex, focus! Right, sorry, coming. Trying to abandon the thought and focus on the small task, I catch, I catch back up to Loken. So, those three back there were exiled to the Black Suns by their chief? That's so harsh. Hmm. It is cruel. Dravonia does not do this. I'm surprised they haven't been slaughtered by demons. I'm surprised they have not slaughtered one another. It certainly seemed ready to slaughter us. What's the deal with this Caius guy? People keep mentioning him. He's the chief of the Riptide clan? Oaken grumbles uncomfortably, his eye line traveling outwards awkwardly. Caius has forbidden technology in his clan. That's weird, considering how much you guys love Zephyr stuff. We change directions after a quick head nod from Loken. Our footsteps clap on the dusty cobblestone. Kais believes the Zephyr learned to lean too heavily into the old knowledge, becoming lost. It is easy to fall when you are lost. He believes that to utilize their technologies to tempt their fate over their fate over again. He believes the Zephyr should be forgotten. Do you believe him? I do not. Tell me what you tell me what you think. I shrug. It sounds like he's balls deep in the same ignorance as everyone else. Ignorance is the order of the world, after all. That is what Dravonia says, but Caius believes ignorance is the law of the world. 
He enforces his belief within his clan strictly. Those who dri those who differ are exiled or killed. I think this guy isn't going to be my biggest fan. How does his clan survive without technology? Caius is ruthless. All are expected to contribute. Death is accepted as weeding out the weak. Caius has an uneasy truce with the other clans, but he has frequently caused conflicts. He wishes to massacre the Ottomunks to kill the old knowledge for good. Don't leave, a, don't leave a Lele in a permanent Stone Age. Dronia said he has four black runners. What's the use if he doesn't want to salvage? Salvage is still useful for trade. Kai simply does not use it himself. Kai's fear of the old knowledge is profound. He warns the other clans that they will damn us all for causing it. Many believe he would destroy us to prevent this if he could. Why doesn't he? The other clans would unite against him. That is enough ta talking of Caius. We have arrived at the rhinestone dish. Oh, hello there. The satellite dish is massive. It towers within a rickety wire mesh fence that's half fallen down and half rusted to dust. I can practically feel the structure bending and groaning from old age. Parts of the dish have fallen completely away. The Audubonks say it has become alive, become active. It doesn't look active. Have you ever been inside? I have not. You know the purpose of these structures? They were sort of used to send messages, like a mobile phone, but on a much larger scale. I'm not sure why Alayla has two of them, though. Hmm. The other is far from here. Alex, remember the task. We are attempting to determine why the rhinestone dish has become activated. Only this, and nothing more. I will go first. Be alert. I'm not sure what we will find. I feel a creeping sense of foreboding as I follow Loken across the open grass towards the rhinestone dish. The windows are all locked and with steel shutters, somehow still intact for all these years. There's a metal door leading inside. It doesn't look like anyone has broken in. Loken grabs the handle and pulls, but it rattles harshly and refuses to open. He tugs harder, baring his teeth, but it doesn't budge. Alex! Yeah? It is locked. Yep, I got that. I do not have the means to open this door. Loken steps back, jaw twisted in uncertainty. I could ask Bite? At first, he adopts his signature glare. But then it softens. Let's just see what he says. He deserves a shot, right? For helping me fight off the sugar cooks? Tell me how to... Hmm. What? I do not know how to speak to him. I raise my eyebrows, pleasantly surprised. Oh, well, um, just talk. He can hear you. Hmm, all right. Bite. I am speaking to you. The store is locked. You can help open it? Tell him to say please. Oh, come on, Bite. Just help us. Bite heard me? He wants you to say please. I have to suppress a laugh at the irritated scowl look and shoots me. This is a joke? It is not a joke, asshole. I only take orders from Alex. Bite, please help us get in. Fine. Kneel down by the door. Let me see the lock. I give Loken a thumbs up, which he returns stiffly, giving me a big grin as a as I kneel down to peer at the lock. Hmm. A single iron deadbolt. It was very, it's very rusted. The hinges have heavily decayed. With enough force, it would break. Tell the mutt he needs to take a run up, then kick the door right above the lock. It'll burst straight open. I step away. Bite says the lock is weak. If you kick the door right here with a run up, it'll break. He is certain. He's never been wrong. Try it. I move away to give Logan some space. He takes a few steps back, then braces himself and kicks his foot at the door. Just as Bite promised, the hinge shatters with a horrifying crunch and the door caves inwards. Logan seems surprised. He blinks down at the disembodied door, then over to me. Bite knew where to kick? He scanned it. He saw the thing was falling apart, just needed a bit of force. Hmm. I'm telling you, he's on our side. Perhaps. Tell him I said thank you. For now, we must go inside. I do not know what to expect, so I will go first. Right. Right behind you, big guy. The room we enter is cramped, muggy, and dim. There are two rows of old control panels, all of which blink and churn with life. Oaken steps cautiously around the panels, eyeing them wearily. Seeing all these computers active is outright bizarre. You know of what these boxes are? I don't know exactly. No. I am uneasy. I have never seen anything like this. The building has a subterranean power source. It's receiving its juice from the dam. What's that got? I guess it started raining then. <laughs> Bite says this. Bite says this place is powered by the great by the by the great barrier. Or that could be static in the background. Yeah. 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 It sounds like static. Okay. He can see if others have been here. Tell him no. The dust in here hasn't been disturbed for centuries. We're the, we're the first in here for hundreds of years. Someone must have flicked on the switch though. Alex, put your hand on one of the control panels. 
I move past Loken, closer to the massive desk in front of me. Loken gaps in horror and pulls me abruptly away. I yelp in shock. Do not approach those! They're just control panels! Control... panels? Let me touch them so Byte can tell us more. Reluctantly, Loken lets go of me. He's baring his teeth and his fists are clenched. Those boxes have blinking lights as demons do. It is unsafe. We should abandon this task. Then we kiss any help from the Autumnks goodbye. It is not worth the risk. We will find another way. Come! We are leaving. But we need their support. Just let Byte do a quick scan, then we can go. Without waiting for his permission, I turn and put my hand on the control panel surface. It's clogged with grease and dust. Scanning. Oh, no. That... that can't be a coincidence. What's wrong? Remember how Elayla has two satellite stations? The other one has come online, too. They've got some kind of wireless link. He says the other station is activated, too. They're connected to each other, but he doesn't know what turn... He doesn't know... He doesn't know what turned them on. Bite, tell us when these places awoke. 85 hours, 42 minutes, and 7 seconds ago. That's about... When I realize my blood turns cold, I pull my hand away from the machines, pay from the machines, paling and back away. The, the pod! When you broke it, that, that's when they activated! Husky's jaw goes slack with bewilderment. Explain! The timing lines up perfectly! It was me! I'm linked to all this somehow! Hookin's tail has gone limp with distress. I did this? I did not mean to. I... I only smashed the glass and pulled you free. I did nothing. Loken, there's no way it's a coincidence. Alex, this is not good. We should not stay here. No, no, we can't leave now. All this has something to do with me. This could be huge. There must be answers here for me and Bite, for my whole species. There must be more to this place. I look back at the machines in front of me. Bite, what do these control panels do? I don't, I don't think they do anything. There's no functioning hardware within. Why the hell would someone fill this place with fake control panels unless it was hiding something? There's one active circuit. It's leading to the wall on your left. My head flicks upwards. On the nearest wall is a small computerized panel, like an empty picture frame. Loken follows my gaze, spotting it at the same time. That is important? But it seems to think so. I go to approach, but Loken blocks my path. I will check first. Clearly not about to take no for an answer, he approaches the pad on the wall. I think it's a handprint recognition lock. Right, right as he tells me, Loken curiously dabs his finger against the device. Nothing happens. He begins peering at it curiously, then tries to dig his fingers at, under it, in a, though attempting to tear it off. Wait, wait, let me try! Logan steps away, giving me giving me room. I'm not sure why I think this is going to work. I tentatively press my hand against the pad. Ah! A painful electric shock, worse than any other bite has given me, racks my body with agony. I cry out and wrench my hand away. In a heartbeat, Logan grabs me by the shoulders and yanks me back, pulling me behind him defensively and growling. Right in front of us, a section of the wall rises up like a door. It is moving! Stay back! Wait! I jump out from behind him, staring at the doorway that just opened. It's dark within, but I can just about make out a set of metal stairs leading below. How the hell? Thank me later. You did this? Explain. Bite opened it. I am confused. I have my tricks, dog. Besides, the software on this thing felt familiar. Familiar in what way? Like putting on an old jumper. I can't explain how. I just knew what to do. I think we're in the right place, Alex. Let's see what's down there. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right here. Ooh, the mystery deepens. Alright, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!